Steve, how so, are you, buddy? Doing brilliant, thank Good you. Good to have you here. Good to thank have you. you here. Good to um, be here. We're here in your beautiful home uh, here in New York City in Soho. And we're just a few short blocks away from Switch Playground. We are. Nice. Is that a coincidence? No, actually, I was apartment hunting when I first got here. And um, I was at the 12th Street location, and this one popped up. So I ran down here and checked it out, and I had to have it. It was perfect. You know, for me, it's like a three-minute walk to 12th Street and about a 24-minute walk to the Soho store. So it's great. Got it. So I just, I just dropped Switch Playground. But for those who don't, who don't know what that is, what is Switch Playground? Okay, so Switch Playground obviously is a boutique style fitness studio. We call it Playground because that's what it is. It's like an an adult or exercise playground featuring multiple pieces of equipment that you utilize through a workout. And uh, I conceptualized this idea over the 33 years I've been in the fitness industry, Um, just looking at the best and taking the best elements of fitness and combining them into a a one hour action packed hit class. You know, I've had other concepts along the way. I had a treadmill style concept. I've had kickboxing concepts, but nothing material that covered every aspect. And I wanted to do something that gave a bit of the personal training feel in a group fitness. So there's multiple trainers. I wanted the experiential components. So I've got the nightclub vibe with the DJ and yeah, the lighting. Love so, that. But the most important thing is the programming. And that's where a lot of people miss that point. And that's the biggest point is it works. It's authentic and it's... It's an amazing workout that changes every day. And, uh, you know, our mantras, we stand for change. And that's the main thing. And of course, making things matter. You know, every rep you'll hear me say in the class counts. Make it matter, make it count. You know, it's easy to drift through life and cruise, but when you have an intention and you make it matter, that's what's key. And I developed this program again, based on all what I believed was the best elements of fitness. Wow, see, that's a lot. You're just throwing in physical activity, inspirational yeah. stuff. We're going to break it all down. I mean, I love, you got me by Switch and Playground. I, I view the world as my playground. Correct. And that's how I like to play. And, and the first time I came to, uh, to the playground, it really brought me to my times as a child. Like, it was just so much fun to work out. I mean, with the DJ going, with the lights, the, the switching up of the different activities, the vibe, the atmosphere that you bring to it, it was, it was really incredible. Um, so it took you, you said, over 33 years of being in the well, 30- 33 years in the fitness world, but I also studied the psychological and psychology behind exercise. And, you know, when you say it made you think of childhood, as as a kid, you'd go to a playground, you'd get on a swing set and another kid would be there, you don't know them. And you'd do that, then you go to the sandbox and to all the different things in the park. And at the end of the day, you had a buddy. And as you get older, society dictates you can't just hang out with strangers. And I changed that because when you come to Switch, I made you pair up. And if you don't bring a partner, you get put with someone and you share that experience together, that whole having fun. And at the end, people high five, let's do it again. We've had two people have been married that met on our playground. What? Yeah. So, get out. So I look at the physical, the experiential, but the psychological, again, like the flow yoga in the beginning. Yeah. Nothing in there happens by error. It's all premeditated and calculated and programmed and choreographed, um, orchestrated brilliantly to a degree that when you walk in, you often hear me say, you know, especially in New York City, it's so hectic that by the time you walk into a space, it takes you 10 minutes to land and become present. So if you just walk into a room and start training, you're actually not even there for the first 10 minutes. So not only are we giving a dynamic warm-up with that yoga because it's cold out a lot of the time and preparing the joints and the body for the workout, but also to shut off or switch off, as I say, from everything, that last email, the computer, your phone, and just be present. And that's the main thing. So you set your intention, and that's the psychological. So the partnering up, the fun, the playground, breaking barriers, uh, creating that freedom of childhood, into today's world got that so take me back to the um take me back to 33 years ago you started fitness what motivated you to get into fitness what what did that look like you know i was um in the school i didn't play uh, team sports i actually was always an individual person because i wanted to hold myself accountable from that's incredible that's not that's awesome. construction upstairs i got it um i wanted to I, I wanted to play <laughs> I wanted to to make myself accountable for anything. So I played golf and tennis. And back then, not many kids played golf, but I loved it. It was a good challenge for me. Um, I always did martial arts, also also individual, not team. 
then when I went into the military in South Africa, I, I found the limits of the human body and pushing the boundaries so exciting. Uh, seeing the capabilities and how far you can go and when you don't believe you can, you can. And having trained with the elite of the elite, that mindset just was amazing to me. So then post that, I, I you know, continued my education. I, I did a sports administration degree and then it became my passion and my blood. You know, it was just something I wanted to help people. So when I was an instructor in the military, uh, I actually worked with the, your special forces. Yeah. But when I was in the prim primarily, I was in the Air Force before you moved out. And I was a, a PTI, which was uh, I had the, the kosher mess. We had a kosher mess there, which oh, was cool. great. What's so, a kosher mess for those who don't know? So, so basically for the, the Jewish uh, troops that came in, they had a, a, a section where they ate that was kosher. Got it. So it was under the Beth Din and they made sure that the food was So you was were an good. instructor, you were the rabbi, you yeah, were no, all no, many I was, hats. I was just, yeah. <laughs> but, but I worked with a lot of the Jewish guys coming in and helped them to believe. You know, a lot of them are babied, unfortunately. You know, they came, they all played rugby, but they came to the military with... You got Jewish with, mothers, what do you yeah, expect? Come that's on. what I'm saying. They Bobo, came with doctor's there. notes that this, that, and the other, so they couldn't do anything. I got it. But I, I knew them and I broke them. I said, you know what, I'm going to show you what you got. And... For me, that was the foundation of the rest of my life. Um, I'm very grateful to have done that uh, because it, it taught me, the, you know, the motivation that we find in life uh, from that very moment and then to share it with people, to help people realize their potential and bypass that too. Mm. So it became, it just became my life. And then I moved to LA and I worked with a good friend of mine, John before, Park. Before we get to yeah. before we get to LA, yeah. I want to ask you. I from my little research that I did, they they called you Muscles. You had a nickname yes. called Muscles yes. in the in the. Yeah. Where did that come from? Well, I was I was bodybuilding then. It was like the late '80s, and that's when it was at its prime. I trained under a, a Reg Park, who was Mister Universe in the '50s. He was Arnold's mentor. Wow! And cool. he was. Uh, he's the guy who helped me to to learn the the foundations and fundamentals of weight training and fitness and i was really into it i was huge i when i when i went in i weighed i mean it was in kilograms at the time i was weighing about 94 kilograms and now i'm 72 so it tells you a bit about how big i wow. was i mean that's 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 like massive. 45 pounds more than this uh, and, and you're like what five yeah, five, eight, five seven and a half seven yeah. five seven and a half five, sorry in heels okay. yeah. um <laughs> so that's wow that's a lot of muscle that's, so they called me yeah. muscles i actually had an incident uh the third day of boot camp, we hadn't been issued our uniforms yet. And I had long hair, it was the 80s. So I didn't cut it because I knew they were going to anyway. Right. And mm -hmm. I hadn't shaved. I mean, we hadn't got our uniforms yet. They were just making us run all over the place. You know, they start that psychological breakdown. Got that. And one of the instructors was standing with another, a group of them. And they're the most feared guys, your PTRs, you know, drill sergeants. Right, get down, get and me. He, yeah, he called me over and he said, in Afrikaans, because I wouldn't speak English, they refused. I had gone to an Afrikaans college, so I spoke fluent, but I didn't speak back in Afrikaans because I'm English. It was, you know, uh, you could speak both languages. Mm. And he said to me, and you, why haven't you shaved? I mean, I've got long hair. I mean, I said, because we don't have our uniforms. And for, forgive my profanity, he said, you're a f***ing Jew, aren't you? Wow. And I know I'd studied the laws of military and I knew you're not allowed to mention religion or politics when you go in. So I said, excuse me. And he said it again, I hit him. You hit, you hit your, hit your instructor. instructor. It wasn't mine. It was one of the instructors. Oh, wow. I knocked him out. I mean, I was a monster at that stage. <laughs> oh, I'm, snap. But I knocked him out. And two other instructors ran over. I stood back and they, they said, no, no, no. Do you want to press charges to me? Wow. And from then on, I kind of established. I said to them, you guys can do whatever you want. Break me, punish me, do it. Never, ever mention my religion again. And I gained their respect and they did. They broke me. They said to me, we're going to get you to lose 17 kilos in, in the boot camp. And they did. I mean, they ran in three months. I dropped down to, I mean, it was crazy. But I, I loved it. I embraced the physical challenge. The challenge of it all. But and yeah, I just don't stand for disrespect on any level. I just don't believe it's necessary in, in any form hiding behind a... Uh, you know, a rank in the military when you clearly out of line, I'm, I'm not going to tolerate it. So. Right. No, 100%. Do you do you identify as being Jewish? Is that something yeah. part of your life? I'm yeah. very much, I'm not religious, but I'm very much uh, pro-Israel. I'm a Zionist. I'm, 
I'm, I'm pro-Jewish. I'll fight for the cause at, at all costs. It's in my blood. Um, I don't follow Torah. I'm, I'm not a good Jew as far as what the guidelines say. But in my heart and my blood, yeah, I will, I will stand strong as a Jew. That's incredible. Do you think there's some, do you, you know, there's like that whole, you know, vibe that most Jews are weak and, and, and small and do you yeah, feel like I, there's like a subtle motivation for you to become this Well, strong? I think there is that, but then you look at our Israeli Defense Force and you can relook at it because out of that tiny country, we probably got one of the most tough human beings, a group of human beings in the world, you know, on a per ratio capita basis, there's a tiny pool of human beings there and the spirit and the fighting spirit is, is something to be desired. True that. So taking me back to um, the days that, you know, before you were going to L.A., um, back in South Africa, you were, it's it's funny, I, I'm familiar with some of the workout videos that are out there, like uh, the Sean T's of the world yeah, and such. Yeah. I was, you, you've made your own. Yeah. So that was actually... Uh, that was called Ruthless? Ruthless. Ruthless. Yes. Ruthless! Ruthless, exactly. That's exactly how I said it. Yes. This voice has always been damaged from these days. But uh, I shot that actually in Salt Lake City, well, in, in Logan, Utah, with a company... Uh, Weida Productions, uh, they were one of the first, the pioneers in fitness way back in the day. They had the first muscle magazines and stuff. But that was, uh, I was already living in Atlanta, Georgia at that time. And, and they recruited me to to go out. Actually, I'd moved from Atlanta back to Cape Town. I was back in South Africa, you're right. And uh, I flew to um, to Logan, Utah to shoot that. It nice. was, uh, it so was they reached out to event. you? Was that a project you wanted to create for yourself? Yeah, well, I have my own ideas and they wanted to do something. And I knew the guy who was the director of training because I'd met with him at the big trade show, Ursa show, which is the biggest fitness trade show in the world. And they have that every year in the US uh, between Las Vegas, LA, different uh, cities. It used to be in Atlanta and I, I got familiar with it when I lived in Atlanta. But I knew the guy who was the director of training for um, the group and um they're an amazing company they they it's so they own they're one of the u.s based companies that manufacture all the the equipment here in the u.s and uh icon is the name of the holding company mm -hmm. and they're based in logan uh utah and i went out there and they had a preconceived idea and i tweaked it completely and made it sort of a combination of what they had and what i had and created ruthless it was the number one selling DVD um, on Amazon for a while and wow. at Walmart. So, yeah, the reviews on Amazon are great. Yeah, it's still around, still going. It's still out there. It's still out there. Is there in the near future a Sean T, Steve? Uh, or, uh, yeah, I, you know are you a what? fan of Sean? Yeah, I think he does great work. Yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm a fan of everyone who promotes wellness. So when people say to me, oh, there's so, many, so much competition in New York, I, I actually say, no, there's no competition in New York. There's... There's other people who do different takes on fitness, and I think community is massive. I, in fact, I've set up trade workouts with about seven different uh, boutiques in New York for my trainers. So we all go to different things together. And I'm a big believer that when we wake up in the morning and help people be better in their bodies, so do those people. And those that do it for the authentic right reasons, I'm very happy to align with. Uh, I criticize those that I don't think are authentic. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, when I say criticize, I, I like authenticity. And for me, that's what I believe in every day, you know. So, um, yeah, for me, it's, it's about what doing do you, what I'm meant to do. Where do you think that, um, that drive to push others to go beyond their limits, where, do you, where does that come from from yourself? I find that when people have that mission to do that, they have to go through themselves, you know, through some Yeah, some, I think basically back to military again when I went in there and... and you know, it's an intimidating environment. Suddenly, you know, you've been in college, you've been at high school, you're the man. I was huge. I was a bouncer at clubs. I was, and then you, your head is shaved. You're in a brown uniform. You're reduced to a number, not a name anymore. And, and you literally have to build yourself back up and fight for your identity. Uh, and, and they're trying to break you. They're literally trying to break you. And I think when you're down to your bare roots, uh, bare bones, and you start to rebuild, you can choose who you decide to be. And for me, like I tell a lot of people, they get into, they break up with a loved one, they're depressed, they go drink. I say, you know, all you're doing is adding a hangover to the punishment. So you escape that reality. Even if you think you do, you magnify it. The next day you're depressed and hungover. So I say you always pick yourself up and make yourself better in a situation you don't 
have self-pity and, and, and make it more negative. You know, you, you take a negative and you make it positive. It's up to you. And it's the same thing. You know, I know psychologically people hate exercise. So my wife reminds me all the time. She's like, remember, you know, you got to, you know, you guys love exercise. Other people hate it. So like Soul Cycle, for example, what they did is they created a brilliant community. They made exercise fun. Right. You got on a bike in the dark. No one was looking at you. You could be any size. Great music. You felt like you belonged. And it created a, they did a brilliant job. They brought. It's incredible branding. Yeah, incredible but they community, brought. The community. They made people believe they can do stuff. And it's amazing. And all these years later, I mean, I know Johnny G well who invented spinning. He had the first Schwinn Johnny G spinning concept. And at the time, people said, oh, no one's going to sit inside on a bike and ride a bike for an hour. It'll never work. It's been the most successful exercise ever. Have you been told that your Switch Playground, your ideas will never work? I've been, yeah, of course. You've been told it's a fad. People aren't going to love it. And you know what? I just, I believe, I said, people say, what about New York? Again, with all the competition, I believe if you have passion, which I thrive on and yeah. I live for. And You're you a passionate tell, guy. Yeah, I mean, it's all. You lose it. I, I, it's, Passion, a good concept and belief and tenacity, you can't fail. I mean, I can tell you the mistakes we made in New York. That couldn't be worse. Textbook. You could write a book on how not to open a business and put the whole beginning year of switch in there. Really? Because, yeah, I came in here, two, two huge flagships. No one knew who I was. No marketing. And the truth is, you know, they say build it and they will come. But they don't. <laughs> build it, market out of it and they'll <laughs> come, you know. Got that. Um, no marketing. So you look at us and you look at Rumble. So Rumble are a perfect platform of how to do a business. They came in with New York partners. Uh, Noah, who, who's the head trainer, was the main guy at Barry's. He had a huge following. So True. it was a, it was a nice Jewish boy. Yeah. yeah, but it was a set thing. Yeah. With Catch Group and Google, I mean, they were set for success. And they now you can see where they are, which is great for me because I've clawed my way into you know, huge rents, no one knew, no marketing, sitting there, you know, I left South Africa and I created boutique fitness in South Africa. There was never a boutique gym there prior to me, there were only big, big box gyms. And I was told when I had my last concept, the first one that I opened in South Africa called Sweat 1000, which was a treadmill like Barry's, but different because we changed the movements on the floor every day with all the elements like switch, but it was set for that day. And then you had the treadmills and these were the ones from Icon called Free Motion incline trainers they went to a 30 percent grade so we used to do a high elevation lunges and we would call speeds for beginnings immediate advance and very focused mm. it was a it was a great workout but you know i going through all that i realized again that's part of why i created switch it was just missing elements you know um what's really interesting is that i just listening to the different chapters of your life you know, through, through, I mean, I find, I know for myself and from others, like people get sh really stressed out about the process. But if yeah. you like look at Switch Playground, it's this element, it's sort of like this, you know, combination of your life. You have the boot camp aspect, your fitness, right. different things that you've worked through life all coming together to this element of becoming Switch. Right. And so it's like really cool that throughout life we have these pieces that are like, wait a second, why am I going through this? Why am I going through that? And it all comes together. You just got to be right. patient, respect it's the process, patience, and it comes together. And tenacity. Um, but yeah, going back to that other point. So when I opened Switch in South Africa after I sold that last concept, there was a natural audience and it took off straight away. As I would have said, like Rumble, when Noah opened, it took off straight away, which I commend them highly on what they did. I know for me, what we what we do is is absolutely authentic and works. Our results are huge. But yeah, it's a story. So I'm closest to the six pack I've ever been. They're going to switch. Well, thank you. Switch. I mean, it I'm, does work and it works outside of there too because it teaches you in life. You know, and people say, why two minutes? Well, the ADD generation is a two minute focus. Yeah. People hate a treadmill or a spin bike. You're on it for two minutes. You can cope. Whereas at SoulCycle, if you hate a bike, you don't go. Treadmills at Barry's, you don't go. You know, so I've thrown in all the elements, but it's just two minutes. So you yeah. do what you do when you're there. Everybody can do so, two minutes. Yeah, so it is like a journey. It's like living in New York. You hate yourself one minute, you love yourself the next, you know, <laughs> and that's switch, you know. It's, that's it's, it, you switch it up. That's exactly right. What gets you through and what tips do you have for somebody who hits that wall? Whether it's metaphorically or it's like physically right now. You hit that wall, you're sweating it out, you hit that 11th mile or what pushes you through what, what what's a good tip to like bam? well that's exactly what i tell my instructors so when i'm i'm training my instructors to be on the mic i tell them don't try and be like me you know you got to be your own individual self again that whole spiel about people hating exercise that's why they're coming to us 
I say to them, you tell me in your brain when you're working out, when you're running a marathon and you're, and you're hitting that wall and you've got that last bit to go, what is it in your head that says, what, what is your mantra? What keeps you going? And for me, I've just got that switch. I, I just go. I mean, that's, it's crazy. I'm turning 50 in two weeks. Yeah, um, wow. That's yeah, amazing. That's, you're the epitome of living young mindset and yeah, how it shows physically as well. Yeah, I mean, it's... You're a good looking guy. It's, it's up, but it's up to you. Yes. I, and I'll say that in class, how bad you want it. I live what I do. I, I, it goes into your nutrition. It goes into everything. But there's, there's that funny saying, but did you die? You know, mm. you hear people say, oh, but did you die? So... When you're on there and you feel like you, you've you given all, I promise you, you got more. Every single one of us has got more, you know, and that you you won't, your body will not shut down unless you're totally dehydrated uh, or you have a medical condition. And that's the truth. Your body will try and stop you doing something by cramping or if you injure something, it'll swell up so you can limit your, your range of motion. But if you're in an exercise that's a 45 minute class, typically in New York, we do an hour you you will survive it whatever you think you can't do you can you know um and just try it and i tell people today is your day and and it depends how bad you want it it's up to you you know do you have a favorite quote well i yell in the class how big is your fucking heart all the time you know <laughs> but yeah the truth is it's, it's yours if you want it but you really got to want it yeah. i mean i can sit here and preach all day to to anybody it's like telling a drug addict to stop they ain't gonna stop till they believe they can or sure. they're ready to and what's really cool is that I find that through the class, I mean, it's not just the exercise, but you, you're throwing a lot of great messages, right. a lot of self-empowering messages that keep pushing right. you through. Yeah, the lights are great. And yes, yeah. the DJ's awesome. Right. But it's like a lot of that positive energy and that community that you're building that really keeps people coming back. I think that's where people say, how come there's 80 people in your class and people dying to get in? I'm not better than... I think it was my, 90 people last week. Yeah, there week. was. Yeah. Uh, I'm not better than the other instructors. I'm just 1 billion percent passionate. I, I don't go to work. Switch is not work. Switch is my life. It's my passion. I'm fortunate enough every day to get up and do what I'm meant to be doing on this planet, you know, and uh, I'm sure like a rabbi or a preacher or whoever gets up and helps people spiritually um, or doctors or surgeons, whatever people do, for me, my work is to make people better in, in their own bodies. And it's an absolute gift when I see guys who are middle-aged, who are sitting on the sofa, that no energy, start their journey and, and then they're running marathons by the time I've left them. Or they've, they've just turned their lives around. Their kids used to beg them to go play the football outside. Now they drag their kids outside, you know. For me, those are rewards and that's success. And what's, um, and what's amazing is like you're saying you're 50, and uh, for many people, they have this mindset that they're 50 years old, like their life is, you know, almost, you know, yeah. over and they start uh -huh. slowing. And here you are, like literally just starting this new chapter. You're here yeah. in New York, you're starting this new, these new businesses. Right. And it's quite incredible how you're embracing life at this stage in your life. Uh, it's, it's challenging. I've, listen, I've reset five, six times in life. You know, I moved from South Africa to LA to Atlanta, back to South Africa, started several concepts which i love doing they've they've con they've what did they they call me a conceptual athlete because i always had this foresight so after the military when i was in atlanta i noticed people wanted to train outside in the summer so obviously i wanted to capitalize on that so i went and got a, a drill sergeant kid at the army surplus store and i took people to this park and some of my good clients and i started a boot camp and that was the first ever outdoor boot camp, which is now a staple in, in most workouts. That's so, incredible. You were yeah, the first. I was the first. There was when I, boot no camp one had did ever not exist. Before. Never ever. Not in a not in a fitness world. So what happened is I used to train Sanjay Gupta from CNN, and he was the medical correspondent. I was the wellness. I'd join him on Sundays and talk nutrition training. So I told him, I said, bring the camera crew out to the park and see what I'm doing. And literally two days later, I had 75 people. It was the best business in the world. $20 a head, no overhead. I was in a park. It was like amazing. Wow. Um, but that wasn't the reason I did it. I did it because I loved, you know, from my military background, I loved that type of people loved it. They were running heels in the rain and mud and they loved it. And that, that was one of the concepts I did. Then I did the first ever, when I say first ever, to my knowledge in Atlanta at the time, I built a full kickboxing studio with rings bags everything that wasn't for fighters it was purely for fitness so my nfl guys i was training um who were some of the guys you were training well jamal lewis was the first one and just to abbreviate it he came to me in the off season and he was weighing 265 they wanted me to get him to 235 
Uh, I obviously studied tapes on what a running back does because I didn't know I know rugby no. from South Africa. I didn't know football, so I studied tapes and I worked him like he was getting ready for a, a fight because I trained Oscar De La Hoya right. in Big Bear, California, in the early nineties. Got that. And I trained him the way I trained the cage fighters. I just drilled him as if he was getting ready to go into a fight. A lot of his players are quick, like like in a fight you have a flurry of thirty seconds or or. 10 seconds and you move out like in stop start stop start so it's a little different than endurance mm -hmm. so i did all the lateral movements that work the muscles to help with speed and agility long story short he went out the second game he played he broke the all-time rushing record in the nfl he ran 295 yards Yo, so, all right so that you get results yeah so that worked and then after that i had all the agents calling me and i ended up with uh you know i had god i had yeah who are some of the celebrities that you've been training well, then, uh, I mean, in the in the basketball world, Charles Barkley was Charles, a client. He wow. was great. Kevin Willis, who these were big boys. They were both over seven foot. Um, Seriously? How, yeah. Like, literally hard to train. And I, I held focus pads for Charles Barkley to box. Literally how? up here. It was insane. Wow. But he's, a, he, he's hilarious. What a great guy. He's so stiff, though. I don't know. I mean, he was just such a powerhouse. I mean, you've seen his golf swing. It's terrible. Absolutely. Yeah, not the Boxing great. is, you know, because everything's front on in... in basketball i'm trying to turn him side on for boxing he just but he was an amazing guy to work with uh matt sharp quarterback michael vick was in uh i trained a lot of the baltimore ravens i trained a lot of the uh victor hobson who was with the new york jets at the time linebacker amazing. i had you trained the you trained the the friends cast yeah so what happened what? is in la what i kind worked of, with them yeah training yeah, that they need yeah that's well that was back in la i worked with um stan winston special effects studios i was on the first set of jurassic park I trained the guys in the dinosaur suits because they were 75 pounds, the suits. That's so, so you don't think about that. You yeah. think about these guys in the dinosaurs. They had yeah. to have muscle. They had yeah, to, be they had to learn how to move. And they called Steven. Yeah, they so called I you worked in. with Stan Winston. He did uh, T2. He did, you know, he did all the special effects. Unfortunately, he passed away a few yeah. years ago. Great guy. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. I so mean, being surrounded by all these amazing individuals who've, you know, who are just top of their game. What have you learned? Is there something that you've taken away from being surrounded by such people? Well, I have, and I, you know what, I've always looked at people as people. Um, so people say, oh, you trained this one. You do. Human beings are human beings. So I appreciate and respect and admire those who rise to the top of their game. Uh, but humility for me is the biggest thing. I even, I mean, I'm not a celebrity, but I get a lot of people like, oh, aren't you proud of what you've done? And you went to New York at 48 years old and you did this, this. For me, I just do what I do. And I don't look at myself as anything other than Steve, you know, um, and I look at certain people we've mentioned some today in our past conversation that I think are great because they do inspire, mm -hmm. but are they really authentic and true to what they're saying or are they saying what they're saying so that they can make sales uh, or become famous or become something they aren't? Um, staying true to you and self, but believing one million percent. So when I say to any entrepreneurial person or one who wants to venture on into something if you truly believe in what you're doing then there should be nothing that stops you you know the only thing that stops you is you literally i mean you know you're all that cliche it's you against you but it is it's true because truly if you want something and you really believe it you'll find a way to to make it happen and then you've got to just grind and and again for me people say how did you do it again with having everything wrong in the beginning it was just belief you know self-belief passion uh, i used to walk past soul cycle and, and barry's and nomad and packed and i left south africa i had 80 people like now fighting to get in classes and i'd go there there'd be three and four i used to walk through so often with tears coming down my eyes <sighs> questioning yeah why am i doing this i've left my family when i say left i've come on a mission but i've stepped away from them i'm not with them yeah. parents are getting older kids are, are growing there's issues with kids you know and here i am why and then I, I knew there was a bigger reason. And I'm not there yet, but I've... What I've was that why? Right. What was What is your why? I don't, it's a good question. My why was always to, to bring my passion to the world. And in South Africa, even though a lot of people visit Cape Town, it wasn't a big enough stage. It wasn't about me getting on a stage. It was about me sharing what I've got that I know is so good with so many more people and what better place than New York City. Yeah. I didn't know how tough New York was when, when Frank Sinatra and all these people sing these songs, there's a reason. Yeah. So it's, it's massive. It's a melting pot. Well, I'll tell you what, no one's here to be mediocre. No one's come to New York. You can be mediocre in Ohio, in Atlanta, and even LA. 
if you in New York, you sacrifice financially, you sacrifice spiritually for a bigger payoff. And that's to be on the main stage. And that's the truth. You, you know, no one comes here to be a waiter. You come here and you wait tables to make a living while you're trying to get to where you go. And on the flip side of that, because everybody's here on that same mission, you find a lot of people are, are, are not true. They, they're here to, you're a stepping stone. So I'm almost at the point when people want to like send me a message. It's like, okay, what do you want from me? Like, mm. I know you don't want to be my friend. I know you don't want to have coffee because you want to hang out. So what do you want? Let's just clear. That. Tell me what you want. I'll tell you what you can do for me and let's move on. Because mm. that's New York. Mm. So how, how is it, you know, living in such a, you know, in this New York environment, how do you not lose your human humanity? How do you not, how do you stay grounded and have faith in like, you know, to, to stay connected with yourself, to keep that spirituality going? Well, you know, being a spiritual person and being authentic and real, you don't get caught up in that. You let it go. You know, it's that saying, you drink poison and hope someone else dies. Yeah, uh, the resentment. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't hold grudges. I let everything go. So when people have negative or try to do negative or, you know, it's their thing. It's not mine. Um, definitely yoga and, and, and exercise is my uh, stress relief. Uh, yeah. And I tell people all the time who don't exercise, you don't need alcohol and you don't need medication for depression and anxiety unless you're bipolar and you really do. But if it's light anxiety and, and slight depression, exercise will fix you. I agree 100%. I yeah. was going through a, a rough patch over the summer and through September, October. And um, just like in my head, anxiety, a little de right. depression. We all, I'm in New York. Yeah, it's, it got to me. Yeah. And um, I started eating healthy. I started exercising. Um, and it's really, I've seen a massive change in my, in my being. In my well, life. you said a key thing then, that's eating correctly because sugar uh, is the biggest toxin in the world and it's in everything yeah and sugar will will cause that uh, serotonin insulin release that then gives you a dip in in energy but alongside that it causes depression and inflammation in the body and when you're eating well and you you wake up and you're excited to be in your body and you feel good Everything else feels good. Totally. I mean, so, it's our vehicle, right? We look into the mirror. We see us every day. We got to be Same thing I say. Whatever. If you've got a hangover, you can't function. Yes. If you eat, you get a hangover. Your body doesn't function. I told these NFL guys, you guys are in your early 20s. You've got five years at this level. You're the Ferraris of the human being. Everyone else is a Honda. So if you put regular gas in a Ferrari, it's going to go. But if you put premium racing fuel in, it's going to go the way it was designed. I said five years. Stick to it. Don't drink in season don't just be a number on the field be the number on the field mm. I'd, i used to go watch basketball in atlanta and when um michael jordan when the bulls came everyone went to watch michael jordan they didn't give a shit about the atlanta team so when you're visiting an opposing team you be the man people want to watch because you're that good don't just get by no i mean Soar. any you know a million people want to be in your position on that football field so why just put on a uniform and go be average you know uh, not that you would because you're already at the top of your yeah. game but be the best version of you, Yeah, you know, eat well, fuel yourself well, train well. And it's the same for life. Uh, even the, the Fortune 500 CEOs I've worked with tweak their diets, help them train. Habits. Suddenly, they're so much more effective in their work environment, clean, clear mind, thinking properly, strategically, de-stressed. It doesn't just happen in the playground. It happens in life. It's a lifestyle. It's not a, a, a it's not a fitness regime. It's a lifestyle. Mm. That's the key. Right. Developing habits, sticking to them. Exactly. And it, it does translate because when you feel good, everything starts to fall into place and then you change all the other areas of your life sure. alongside it. I heard that saying be, that there's uh, two types of disciplines. The discipline, um, no, I'm sorry, the pains. The pains of regret and the pains of discipline. Right. And you could choose which yeah, one. Yeah, I, I like the discipline, you know. And other people, there was another saying I put on one of my Instagram posts. It's Which, by the say, way, is booming. Thank you. Yeah. It's yeah. Doing a lot like 5K better. average likes. Yeah, right I mean, who's counting? I'm just I saying. Don't know. It's, You're it's doing good. something right. I have good people helping me. But, um, you know, when, when, what was the saying I said? People said, when you lack motivation, what do you do then when you're not motivated? I said, then you rely on discipline. So when your motivation isn't there, then your discipline kicks in. So it's your second, your, your emergency shoot. Yeah. That's it. So I wake up some days, it's freezing outside. I don't feel like walking to Bond Street Equinox. And if I sit here and think about going through each exercise, I don't want to go. But when I show up and I just get busy, I, I lose myself in it and suddenly I'm elated. When I walk out of there, I'm ready to take on anything, you know. So truly, I say it's not just from a, 
uh, and a, a recent post again sorry to refer back to instagram don't work out because you hate your body work out because you love it yes it's the truth you know you you walk out and you feel amazing it's 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 not just to look good it's looking good is a side effect of exercise it's feeling good and making yourself better at being in your own skin and then looking good is great and pushing them like i mean while working out is pushing that mental well that's why as well. i keep saying smash yeah. your comfort zone nothing happens in your comfort zone find your magic and it's true when you have a breakthrough you actually feel like you can take on the world you know yeah absolutely you mentioned something really really powerful earlier on we were saying when it was early on only three people were showing up to your yeah. class and you left all this success right. back in south africa and you're walking by these other types of gyms and whatnot and you're you're just in this state of like of yeah, emotion, depression, depression. Yeah. what what was going on there and you know the, the, i guess a certain comparison of such and like why did i leave and how did you get out of that well you know my I had a good support system, even though they weren't here back home and good friends. And I'd, I'd bounce off them like, what am I doing? Here? And that said that Barry's has been there for 20 years. Soul Cycle has been there for 18, 15 years. They've established. And you know what? Now, when I look back in retrospect, I've been here for two and I can see in two years what we've done is incredible based on the errors. So it proves that our brand is is authentic and people love it. But what went through my mind was just to keep pushing i mean i knew in life that i knew i knew that we had a good thing i just needed people to know that and i needed the outreach and i needed you know people talk and uh you know we we did what we had to do to get through and you know comping classes and finding people to be spokespeople and influencers which is the game everyone played i didn't really want to go that route because i know it's it's not authentic in my mind organic growth is where i wanted to be but you know the money that's pouring out you can't wait for organic you've got to go and do what you got to do you know and we did but it was hard it was very humbling it was great to be humbled um i didn't need to be but it was a good lesson um for me and for others and and i'll tell you like i heard i was at the barber shop today and i heard a guy saying uh, he's also an older guy i've just started a new business well it's the same business but me and a partner have gone in and he looked kind of like miserable and the guy said well that's great you're gonna make money he said well, now all the money's going out, none's coming in. Mm. And the truth is everyone has the same story, you know. It's the entrepreneurship it's, right there, right? It is. it is. I mean, you know, they say entrepreneurs jump out of a plane and figure out how to fly on the way down, you know, because <laughs> yeah, truthfully, yeah. you know, there's a saying, you, you've got to, you make a plan and, and God laughs. True. Because, yeah. uh, you, you want know, to make God laugh, make you, a plan. You live in the moment and you just believe. That's all I can say, you know. Yeah. That's true. So like how over the past three, three years, how has the fitness world changed from when you got into it and to where you find yourself now? Well, I think everybody's jumping on the boutique bandwagon. I think a new concept opens every other day in New York City. Um, but there's there, there's authentic and there's gimmick and there is. And what's some know? and so so someone who comes to New York City, for example, where there's so many of these new boutique uh, yeah. gyms open up, how can they quickly see what is you know real, what is genuine? Well, like I said, a lot of international and uh, national people come to New York to see what's going on, and there's there's right. sort of there's the ten list. There's there's the obviously the Rumbles, the Soul Cycles, sure. Barry's Fitting Room. Um, there's Project by Equinox. There's uh, switches on there, obviously, Switch, which yeah. has been great. Uh, and they go to all these different ones. And uh, then you've got others, platforms that sort of offer multiple classes. Uh, class Pass has been a great help for people who travel. They get to try different things. Sure, yeah. Uh, the only thing I have negative to say for me is people don't really have a set structure. They just jump on whatever credits or smallers and go do it. There's no rhyme or reason to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be some structure in what you're doing because your body needs some kind of structure yes shock your body every time because it gets results that's what we do we stand for change but there needs to be some kind of system and procedure to what you're doing um so i mean listen again if you've got any what i can tell people you come to new york start small <laughs> that's yeah. that's rule number one choose your your location wisely and and start small and build because you've got your masses here i mean yeah. People will go to most places as long as it's good, you know, as yeah. long as it's not totally out there. Do you have a favorite workout? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously I love switch uh, type training. Yeah. But I, I love tie boxing. I love the, I love a place called Hit House. The owners are amazing couple that own it. They're authentic like I am. They 
they live for what they do they're passionate they're there 24 7 mm -hmm. just the two of them great instructors but more than that they've developed a their own bag which is their their i guess their secret sauce that's called the bishop which we're putting in switch by the way it's got oh, zero impact amazing. so you can well i wear little mitts i don't even wrap my hands and you can kick and punch this thing and at 50 your joints hurt and yeah. usually if i go to another boxing if i hit the heavy bag i'm sore my neck my shoulders this thing you can go and they teach great classes it's technique and it's it's amazing so i go there and i go to lion's den yoga i do baptist flow yoga which yes. i love yeah yoga for my mind has yoga saved me because that is the biggest mental challenge of anything when you're in a heat it's so impossible I, it's it's mentally challenging because yeah. the physicality is one part your body gets tired but your yeah. brain can run that's where you can learn to push through your thresholds because when you are like in a even a warrior two pose reached out and you're squatting down and your shoulders are burning and you're holding and you're sweating you question yourself but then you can take that i created switch on a yoga mat in south africa the whole concept for a year or eight months that i sold my sweat 1000 i went to yoga every day because yeah. it was there was a lawsuit there was a lot of issues but yoga. oh we're, oh, we're going there <laughs> <laughs> there was there were issues but yoga yoga was medication it was it was really a natural healing remedy for me mm. so i love yoga and i love the hit house and then i love my my strength training and cardio you know yeah. it's a good balance that's a good point you mentioned that you said that that the epiphany of swish came on yoga mat where you're just sort of slowing things down mm -hmm. and being mindful of yourself Correct. and your thoughts and in new york living in new york city the past five years this is all this hustle and bustle and there's a lot of this hustle mentality that we're yeah. taught and we're and we're told society says but there's something to say i mean you may, you may agree with that it's like in the calmness of it all to take that time to reflect to meditate to to breathe and that's where inspiration and creativity could really flow uh, well, in. Yoga, definitely. And also, you said something now that society, I'm a nonconformist, as you can see. I, yeah. uh, I don't believe in the restraints of society. As I said, switch to pair people up. It's kind of awkward. People were like, I don't have a partner, so I don't go. I said, well, come and we'll pair you up. You never yeah, know. You know? Meet somebody. And people hang out and, and they love it. It's, uh, I swear, I carry on, my shirt's off. Not that I don't give a shit, but I know that at the end of the day that's me and i'm giving you me my ceo I even said i need you to keep your shirt on while i said no, i'm not gonna do it <laughs> that's, that's, i'm not changing to a board meeting. I'm, yeah i'm not i'm not gonna change who i am but it's intimidating all people see is pictures of these bodies and then if they're out of shape you know what i say to people if i see someone who's out of shape in the gym i will do i will walk up to people in, a, in equinox yeah and con congratulate them and ask them if they need any advice or help because if someone is trying to change their lives or their lifestyle i'm all for it if i see an obese person eating a super sized fries and a shake i'll criticize them yeah because you've got a choice and you know there's this whole new movement of body positive you asked me about what's changed in fitness yes all these big girls and shape magazine all of them are promoting heavy girls i believe in body positivity and loving the body you're in but i don't believe in unhealthy if you're heavily overweight you're not your organs are being pushed you're not well you're not healthy so it shouldn't be a role model for people it's accepted when no one's judging you but if you're going to use models models are meant to be model yourself on that mm -hmm. so strive to be better even though you're confident in who you are now it's great is you think that message though when they're using those types of you know models that are you know, like overweight or big or large or not is that just a message for you for women to say hey don't take your you know don't you know beat yourself up about how you yeah look? It, it, listen and it's fine but don't use them as a role model you know mm -hmm. let's let's not to be an anorexic either i don't think any extremism is 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 healthy yeah but if you're gonna work out you know make sure you're working out for the right reasons like i said because you love your body but if you want to get healthier you know it's good to accept and love who you are but you can always be better everyone always says to me you're 50 look at you are you done i'm like <laughs> i can always be better you yeah. know i can yeah so new year starts and the one of the biggest you know new year's resolution out there is people signing up for gyms and they say like 50 percent of people just lose their membership they don't stop they stop showing up after a month 50 percent yeah i'd say it's even probably higher even higher yeah what do and you think happened what goes in that through that mind process what changes from the that, that because dedication? they're not they they're doing it because it's what's meant to be that's what's meant to happen it's the first i'm changing they're not really ready to change the truth is, like people say, I'm going to go and diet on Monday and Wednesday so that they can actually binge out for another four days. And they're living in the now. 
and not living in it. Then I said, well, why don't you start today? Well, I'm not, you're not what? You're not ready to commit. So why are you going to be ready on Monday? No, I've set my goals, but you're already setting yourself up for failure because now you've opened the door to get even crazier till then. And then you're going to start sacrificing. It shouldn't be that way. It should be a lifestyle. And actually, for the first time this year, we've seen more people stick than the past. So we did have a surge, but our surge started Thanksgiving, believe it or not. Really? Thanksgiving weekend, Black Friday was a turning point for our business here. For whatever reason, we did a big marketing campaign. And from then on, it's just, thank God, been amazing. And then, you know, by now, all the New Year's people would be done. And we're still growing day on day on day on day. And... Um, I just believe that it's like a drug addict or a smoker say I'm giving up when they know they're not ready to and they know in their heart they're not going to. So mm. for me, I believe people who say they're going to do it on January 1st, it's not going to happen. It's the wrong mindset. It's You're not doing it for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. You're doing it because it's the first. Right, to create real change. Day. Right. Yeah. It's like another day, another night, New Year's Some Eve. Some days not a day of a week. It's, it's every day is the day, you know, yeah. so... Yeah, have a rest day on a Sunday if you want, or a cheat day. I don't believe in a cheat day. I believe in have a cheat meal. And I don't like the word cheat because what are you cheating on, really? So you're eating stuff you love as a reward for being great. I tell people this. It's simple. Whatever change you make will reflect on your body and on your attitude. So if you change 30% of the way you eat, you'll get a 30% result. But if you change 80, you'll get 80 There's no such thing as a hundred for people because people love to, one of the few pleasures in life is food. So if you are already living in such a complicated world, that's why, you know, when people want to count macros and calories and I'm like, well, do you know what those calories are made up of? What are they doing for your body once they ingest it? It's technical, it's science, it's, you know, it's, it's physiology. It's what happens to you when you eat that protein, that type of starch, that carb, that impact sugar. It's so much. And life's too complicated. So I'll try to keep it simple for people out there as far as eating goes. You know what you shouldn't have. It's very evident. But the truth is calories in against calories out. If you're expending X amount of calories, you're taking in less, you'll lose weight. If you're not, you're not going to. So, I mean, uh, taking a little shift now from, from that, if you, random question, if you were a clothing brand, which one would you be and why? Hmm. It's a good question. I think I'd like to say Supreme or Off-White because they're so cutting edge and funky, which is part of us. But I'd also say I'm Levi's because I'm true and authentic. Uh-huh. So they stick. Levi's has been here forever and they're still here and they still can they're funk evolving. their brand. And yeah. they, they do, like Nike. Just you know, Marcia is, is funny. As he said, our competition isn't you know, I said, I don't have, but he said, our competitions is Amazon and CNN and, and Google. He said, he said, the people who work there were created on smarter than us. They're not better than us. So why can't we be as big as them? They're our competition. You uh, know, I like, that's opening a whole other mind. That's, that's a whole mindset right that's, there. That's, that's what he says. He says that our competition is the biggest brands in the world because we can be there. We are as uh, our products better. Our products great. And we're not less smart. They built it from nothing. So that's that's our competition. So can you, yeah, I have a friend of mine who was standing, he took a picture of, like in the biographies, autobiographies in, in Barnes and Nobles. And he's just like, you're all human beings, right? Yeah. All these incredible we'll stories the and journeys. Way. We all start, exactly. Yeah, we all start, we'll start at birth. We all end the same way. Yes. But we all started the same way. And there's that other saying I've used before, so cliche. It's like, you only live once. No, you only die once. You live every day. And that's the truth. So... Live your best life and by that, make yourself the best version of yourself you can be in your choices with food, exercise, not obsession. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's yes, I would be looked at as obsessed by laymen or by regular people, but it's pure dedication rather than obsession for me. I it's guess my it's, life. It's, yeah, I guess it's how you look at it. Yeah, right? I am my brand. I mean, yeah. people say you live and preach what you do. I do. I mean... That's what authentic is. I'm not a, you know, you go to some of these gyms and some of the personal trainers are overweight and out of shape. 
It's like you got the most fittest trainers, yeah, listen, by the way. I wouldn't go to a restaurant with a skinny chef. You yeah. know, there's something yeah. wrong. You know, so yeah, yeah, your yeah. chef got to be fat. <laughs> you know, because then you know the dude loves what he does. Right. Yeah. Unless that's he comes to switch, then you know, then he's a skinny chef, and that's right. fine. You're very passionate about gym, health, mindfulness, and one thing, of course, you mentioned throughout the podcast is your family. Mm -hmm. So that I mean begs me to ask the question: How does that work when you're living out here in New York City? And they're out, you know, in South Africa. How do you find that, you know, relationship, that, that family balance? Well, fortunately today with all the technology, with video calls, and you can be there a lot more. But it's having a very strong foundation and, and, and truly letting people live their best life in, in the pursuit of what they're trying to do, supporting each other. Their support is paramount to my success and to my being able to do what I do and they're there 24 seven. I mean, we speak 12 times a day, you know, yeah. uh, my older kids, obviously I don't speak as much cause they're teenagers. Well, my son's already 21. So, wow. um, your oldest is 21. He's 21. How yeah. many, how many kids do you have? I've got three, three kids. So I, I used to have a son and two daughters and I've got two sons and a daughter cause my youngest is transitioned to a male, which has been quite an experience. How but was that experience? You know what? There's um, no playbook for that, is there? There's no playbook, and it was, uh, you know, everyone goes through the same emotions. It's doubt. It's it's a phase. It's not happening to me. It's he'll get over. She'll get over it. You know, in life, when we have kids, our goal is that they're happy and healthy, and that carries over into whatever. If your child comes out as gay, embrace it, and and as long as they're happy and healthy, you're happy. So you can't. You've got a choice. I could fight it. And say bullshit you're not doing that and, and where does it go the suicide rate i believe in in transgenders is higher than in in most other um different body type people yeah. that you know what they only discovered or finding out about transgender now i mean when i say now it's it's in the last 20 years it's become more prevalent 100%. and and we're on a lot of the as i said earlier the facebook groups and the support groups and every day, my wife was telling me there's one for Jewish kids, especially it says, welcome to the X family. Welcome to this family. Every day, new kids are coming out. Oh, wow. In the old days, they didn't know what it was and they couldn't live their lives. I was watching a show on TV the other day on Netflix. A guy who's one of the biggest world record power lifters in the world and bodybuilders, three kids married, is coming out. He's always wanted to be a woman, but he's mm -hmm. so big. He looks ridiculous. Right. He's got part of they him. Call Steve up to this yeah, house. Hey, hey, this guy's huge. I mean, he doesn't want. He wears makeup and and he's sitting with his three boys. They're playing in the with a the football. Then he goes inside and puts on makeup and a dress and he's going to a club. Um, it's not a choice. Transgender is what it is. Unfortunately, what your mind and your body are two different things. You're living in the wrong body. I couldn't think of a worse affliction. Yeah. You know, blind, deaf. They're all bad, but waking up every day and wanting to be something you're not i've watched my child go through that and all we could do was support so when he came out to me i immediately went to social media when he was really ready and i put it out there because i had a, a big following of support on facebook it was a message sure. that's been shared over a thousand times i've had schools in the midwest messaging me could they use this story and it's been in multiple magazines He's very, I'm so proud of him. I mean, to, to be 13, 13 and, years yeah, old and he's now 14, but at 13, we've already now done the top surgery. We are pretty far advanced. He's on testosterone. So you're committed. You're committed. We're committed. For I mean, we're all in. I mean, the top surgery was a very tough time for me when they wheeled him away from me thinking to myself as a parent who signed off on this, if anything, God forbid happens, I'm going to never forgive myself, you know, cause it's, you're putting a perfectly healthy body into a surgery. Right but I've never seen a happier human being. He was live on his Instagram feed post-surgery an hour, still on his meds, talking to people and just such a strong will and such a, such a role model for, for others. But And has he found himself now in a, uh, a position of, of like, People look up to him, reach out for support? For a rebound? lot do, and a lot of bullying still. Oh, and and you sure. know what, I've taught him... I was fortunate enough to come across a androgynous model here in New York called Rain Dove, who's very famous, who's identifies as it, as them, as they, no sex. Uh, and, and I had lunch uh, with them and, and they told me, tell Luke to do debating at school, learn debating, because uh, Luke would get angry. And I'd say, you can't get angry. People don't understand. I mean, yeah. my dad's old school. I mean, he still calls him her and the old name Taryn and 
And it's hard for him. I still mess up because I'm not there all the time. I go, yeah. girls, let's go. Dad, there's one girl. Okay, listen. It's, I said, I'm human. I, you know, I've got a tattoo of my children's name on my side because you'd think you've got names that don't change. Sure. They do, but I won't remove it because I had 13 years of Taryn. And I, I basically that Taryn moved on and Luke stepped in. And I love Luke for all he is. And unfortunately, I lost Taryn, but I had 12 good years, 13 good years with Taryn. But when I look back in retrospect, you can see clearly that he was never happy being a she. You know, kids are, you know, dress up parties with beautiful hair, was a model, got every job that mm. she ever went to at the time, but was never into it. You know, always different. I thought a tomboy, but just I didn't knew from a young age that he, he you know, once said to me, the first thing said was two years ago, Dad, do you ever feel like you're in the wrong body? That was the, that was the opener. Yeah, up. I was buying bikinis with her at the time and she didn't want at the time uh, to shop for like sexy, like wanted like a surf shirt and shorts. And I was like, oh, whatever, like let it go. My wife actually helped me very much. And then I watched a documentary Katie Couric did on transgender, which was phenomenal in our show. And there I, I said, you know what? I'm thinking like these other parents, uh, denial, choice. It's not, it's not a choice. No one wants to be that. No one chooses to be in the wrong body, you know, yeah. it, it is what it is. So all we can do is support, love and, and help our child be the, uh, happy in what they do. That's amazing. Listen, Steve, it was really a pleasure chatting with you. And it's incredible through the whole spectrum of your life to hear the passion, to hear the dedication you have from family to, to self-improvement, to fitness and health. So you've always been a leading, you know, major leading leader in, in all those uh, fields and you know, thank you for all that you've contributed to the world of fitness and health. The incredible, you know, parent that you are, and uh, and the friend that uh, that you are to me. So I really appreciate you taking the time Such a and pleasure. sharing your wisdom. Such an honor and privilege. I love to share, and if it can ever help anybody uh, change their day. If one do you person... have Do you have a few like like a, a couple of one or two tips for someone at home who wants to make some sort of change, whether it's a mental or physical change? Something that you want to share with well, them it's, before it's, we go? Yeah, I mean, it's a simple thing. Just do it, like Nike says. Uh, if you want it, it's yours. I keep saying that, you know, like when I did the Ruthless, I wanted people to feel like I was reaching through the screen and taking their hand. Yeah. With, with boot camp, it was like a, a breakdown type training. Switches is, is a, a training where I want people to feel like I'm going to hold your hand and show you you can. It's uplifting. And that's what I believe people should do. Make the, the smallest change you make will be the biggest change in your life. So get up, go for a walk, whatever it is start somewhere i mean they literally say you start at the bottom of a mountain don't look up just start walking and that's the truth it's it's easy to find excuses Journey and it's miles. easy to stay the same yeah. but if you really want to change there's only one person and that's yourself and and anyone has the same opportunity and ability as the next person they've just done it you just have to do it boom dropping bombs right yeah, there there hey, it is wow that's incredible. Big finish. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Steve. Incredible. Such incredible. a pleasure and honor to be with you. And likewise, great friend and, and mentor in your way too. Thank you, Steve. All the best, man. See you thank on the you. playground. Look forward. Yeah.